Hello everybody, I am Toby Loxton of TFL Creative Media and welcome to the first discussion video for Autism Awareness Month that we are celebrating, well this month, at TFL Creative Media as a lead up to the production of our latest short film, The Railway Woman. And our first discussion today is going to be with Michael, with Michael Woods. And there it is! There oh. we go, I'm so sorry for the delay start, hello everyone. <laughs> Yeah, um, say hello to to Michael, everybody. He deserves a wave, uh, just to him, just as much as um, I do, as we do. How are you, man? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, oh man, uh, dissertations. That's all I can say, really. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, the Railway Woman is actually part of my university dissertation, and we, me and Michael, are on the same course. And he's uh, working on a dissertation film right now. That's um, right. Yeah. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. No, it's okay. Uh, well, technically, I am and I'm not. Well, I'm actually doing the script writing disc, but still, I'm helping out on production dissertations because I love doing it. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, that brings us on to the first point of uh, this live stream, and that is. Uh, so, uh, Michael, um, you are, um, are a, a, a filmmaker on the autistic spectrum. Mm -hmm. When I first met this guy, I, I could not tell. He's a bit more um, reserved when compared to me. So uh, that, there's no shame in that at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But please, um, tell us a bit more about yourself, Michael, uh, and what your interests in the film industry are and just sort of like general ambitions where you'd like to go. Well, okay. Uh, I mean, where to start, really? I mean... Oh, before, uh, before we continue, if you guys have any uh, questions for uh, Michael um, as we go along, please do answer in the comments uh, section below. Okay, uh, Michael, go. Okay, well, uh, I mean, where to start? I guess I'll start with university, you know. Uh, my Where I'm at now is I love doing writing scripts, telling stories, and being on production. Uh, primarily on production, I like to be a sound recordist. So, uh, you know, being on set, recording sounds, doing Foley, doing room tone, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing a production next week. And yeah, I mean, that's where I'm at the moment. But my interests kind of, you know, it kind of has changed over the years. Originally, I was like voice actor, or game designer or stuff like that. But I've kind of really settled into doing production and writing now. It's something I've been wanted to do since uh, I would say like secondary school. Yeah. But yeah. Well, that was a, that was a very nice description there, uh, Michael. Yeah, for uh, keep it short and sweet, you know, short and sweet. Well, because I mean, you, I mean, you are obviously, you actually are a very talented write writer. You've come up with some very interesting ideas. Like, um, what sort of stuff do you like to write about? Oh, uh, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of people, including me, my specialty is definitely fantasy. I love my fantasy. Uh, I just like, uh, I think Miyazaki. I like his. Uh, I'm very inspired by his aspect of how he approaches his writing for fantasy, where it's like combining the fantastical with very realistic uh, subject matters and situations. And yeah, Are you more of a um, Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter guy? Oh, I mean, I had a sister who loves Lord, loves Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, but if I had to pick, I would definitely say Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And you say um, you've done, you're quite interested in sound. And uh, I can actually um, back this up because um, he's, uh, Michael and I have worked on productions where Michael has been on sound. So um, what is it about sound specifically? That you? Because it's a very underrated role in the media industry. So it's nice, it'd be nice to know who, for somebody who's interested in it, uh, why, why what, what tickles your fancy about it? Okay, so I didn't, well, it's not, I, it's not like I loved it or anything. It was very funny how I fell into it. So it was back in college. Basically, during my college days, I was doing a media B-Tech. And I basically, a friend of mine from another college was like, oh, I need someone to be a boom operator. And that was the first time I kind of got experience with sound. And at that time, I had no idea what I was doing. But I think using that boom pole and doing the sound and obviously using the limited knowledge I had, it was like, oh, this is actually really cool. And that's kind of what sprouted me to really want to learn more about it. And kind of being at uni has kind of allowed me the opportunity to, you know, kind of learn a little bit more about production sound and being a record, being a sound recordist. And yeah, I mean, it's kind of where it sprouted. <laughs> yeah. And that you were working on the, a dissertation project next week. Are you doing sound on that? Yes, I am. I'm going to be the recordist as well. Yeah. 
Well, I think that uh, myself and everyone who's watching should wish you the best of luck with that because dissertation, it's going to, I mean, I'm going to be doing the Railway Woman dissertation. So that's all going to be very overwhelming. So um, yes. I thought that you guys and all of us can get is much appreciated. So just the best of luck your way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I've always liked getting involved in productions and helping out people where I can with stories and ideas and you know, helping out on productions is one of the best ways to do it, you know. Don't give people in the audience ideas, otherwise they'll ha you'll have your Instagram feed. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, and by the way, on that subject, just so that people uh, know, where can they find you on Instagram? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, obviously on my current account. Uh, this is my, like, my main like, personal account, Michael Woods. But I have recently started a business one. Uh, obviously, there's only one post at the moment, but it's, uh, I think it's Mickle.Woods. Uh, you can find me on there as well. I'll be posting, hopefully plan to post more images from my, you know, on being on set and maybe even some writing samples, but we'll wait and see. Well, I'll definitely be in to see more of that. Yeah. Uh, Poppy <laughs> just uh, joined in the chat. Hello, Poppy Woods. Hello. And Poppy Bean, um, 1993, is also joined. Oh, and um, this is uh, Jared, 1983. Oh, that's <laughs> three people at once. Uh, is Poppy Woods in relation to you? Yes, she is actually. It's a cousin of mine. Yeah. Oh well. Um, yeah. Hi, um, Poppy. Um, Michael. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, let's get into um, some other topics discussion, and this is um, all about um, autism. That's what these discussions are about, but mm -hmm. also specifically autism and media, and uh, two topics that we're going to cover now we've um, gotten to know each other a bit. The audience. Oh. Well, um, I think we should talk about um, autistic representation in the media industry because um obviously like we we are living in a world where representation is getting much much better and much more recognized and celebrated mm. but um if do you think it's fair to say that autism has had a bit of a um up and down sort of battle when it comes to proper representation like just what are your views on the representation of autism media in general well i'm definitely in agreement with you with your first point that it has definitely evolved and definitely gotten better over the years. I definitely agree with that. Uh, I do think at first it was very black and white in how it was represented. In what se sense was it black and white? It was either the extreme or the really, like the, the extreme cases and then the minor cases, like the savants. Yeah, like, oh yeah, God. Yeah, because like some, some people don't know the difference between autism and savants, which is yeah. really frustrating. I mean, that's basically the massive, that's one of the ma many, many faults of um, Rain Man. Exactly, yeah. That's kind of why I think that kind of came from, was Rain Man, primarily. Uh, I yeah. Think I think the idea of like, like the Good Doctor, there's a TV show. I think that's currently portraying that narrative mostly. Yeah. I think I'm trying I... to stay away from it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you've watched the Good Doctor. I've watched bits of it. I haven't watched it fully, though. So. Yeah. I've I watched um, like the first season of The Good Doctor, and I've been trying to um, get into the other seasons of it. I mean, there's like three or four of them else. Mm -hmm. um, I think the reason that I haven't been able to do that is because I kind of want to avoid it. It's okay. not that the representation of um, The Good Doctor is bad. Oh, and hello, me, Donovan. Thank you for joining us. Okay. It's just, you know, it's just a bit not quite there if you know what I mean. For those of you who don't know, The Good Doctor is a basically, it's in the, it's it's about this doctor who's on the autistic spe spectrum and he's basically, you know, he's like, like the field, but you know, he's one of the, he's, he's like you said, like one of those extremes of autism. Sort of like he is portrayed like a savant. And mm -hmm. so, you know, got these um, awkward uh, curiosities about him that imply that he's on the autistic spectrum. And, Parts of it do, and um, it's not a bad representation. They say they have a consultant board, but I just don't think it rings true, does it? Yeah, I feel like, I think because of how the nature of the show and the sort of show it is, it kind of, I don't know, I feel like it kind of drama dramatizes it a bit, in a way. Because, um, I mean, do you believe that, you know, if you, representation, it should, like, it shouldn't be done by completely focusing on it 100%. It should just be a part of something. Yeah, I think, I feel like, like any person, it's not just, you know, a person shouldn't just be, you know, their neurological disorder or their, their, their mental illness. They're, they're more than that. You know, a person is a person. 
And I feel like, yeah, that might make a, be a part of you, but it's not the entire person, you know. That's not the entire personality. So what do you think that is, what do you think is the best thing that um, people who are, who are not necessarily on the spectrum in the industry, but are thing before people in the spectrum in the industry, what do you think that they could learn from to sort of like get away from that representation? If like Rain Man, the good at, uh, doctors is one extreme, what would be the, best, be the better direction to go in, in your view? Uh, well, I think some good examples, I think, are, uh, well, I think obviously Albeed from Community. I think he's a really good example. Do you really think that our bed's on the spectrum? I think he does show some symptoms. Uh, I, ju I, ju I just, I could never, I could never really buy it. I mean, I'm a massive fan of Community and Dan Harmon's on the spectrum himself and Community's one of the most diverse and funniest shows ever been created. I just never really picked up with um, uh, Abed like that. I mean, it's like people say that, you know, Sherlock Holmes is on the spectrum, but I've always just believed that Sherlock Holmes is just that smart. And yeah. he can be awkward at times. It's just like like any other personality quotes. It's just, like, you just can't put a label on it with autism and just help it explains it all that. Mm. I think that's a good point as well. I think that's the thing with autism as well. The reality of it is that you don't know sometimes. It, it, some people are very good at hiding it. Like, my, I guess some people might say myself for instance, that I guess that is a case where, you know, some sometimes it's, sometimes it's, you can tell, sometimes you can't, where it just depends on the circumstance and the person, you know, and how they're feeling in that time. I mean, that is actually a good point. So, mm. so to bring us on to the final topic, and we can discuss these more in detail now, oh, yes. uh, we talked about some bad representations in the industry and how the industry could sort of like um, move towards it, if you want to use like Albert as an example of that, because... <laughs> Not a bad or good example, but it's, it's an example. And mm -hmm. I guess you know, you they, like you know, there are other things that could um, you know, that writers can pick up and pop on just to not go to that extre extreme, just and not to not to both extremes, just meet in the middle. So, mm -hmm. what um, recommendations would you give to pe and people? Film, television, stage play, audio drama, whatever. Mm -hmm. what think is something that gives the best representation of autism even if it's not about autism even if it has an autistic character in it yeah and Ooh. i mean if we're going for animation uh because i'm an animation guy i love my animation uh though i do think the later seasons kind of drop in quality i do think steven universe has a really good representation of autism i i don't watch steven universe what's it about uh, basically, it's like, uh, oh, if I can remember, I haven't watched it in years, but uh, Crystal Gems uh, fighting, to save, you know, fighting to save the world, and the main character, Steven, uh, helps them, and he's like the chosen one. But one of the characters they meet later on, who's like a bad guy who becomes a good guy, is, uh, is called Peridot, and uh, she, sh she shows signs of being on the spectrum, but obviously it's not said flat out, but... She shows signs and clear symptoms of someone with Asper Asperger's. I can't pronounce today. Asperger's. And uh, she's Sorry, actually a really good representation of it, you know. Like, um, um, actually, um, in the first episode, um, the Jeff Winger character pointed out to Abed that he has Asperger, Asperger's syndrome. But because of his American accent, um, uh, Troy, uh, Donald Glover's character, just thought it sounded like Asperger's. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Oh, that's a throwback. Yeah. Um, that character in Steven Universe with autism again? Uh, Peridot. Peridot? Yeah, Peridot. Like, like, the, like, the, like the gem. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Um, if you any uh, film examples? I do, actually. And this one's quite a surprise, because uh, I wasn't expecting it. And it's from a place I wasn't expecting, but it was the, uh, the 2018 Power Rangers movie. <laughs> I've heard about this. Uh, the uh, Billy... Blue Ranger. Blue the... Ranger. Yeah. Surprisingly, I, a very, a, a actually very grounded representation of autism. I actually, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm a bit lukewarm on that. I mean, I've been a Power Rangers fan ever since I was little. Still am. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm too fond of that movie. I mean, I just was more worried about, you know, just them getting, you know, the concept of Power Rangers right. That's fair enough. I think, surprisingly, I thought the Power Rangers side was a little weak, but the actual character and the character writing and the dynamic of the group was actually... Pretty solid, I think. 
Yeah, it's interesting because um, um, I went out with so someone who um, what, who likes the Power Rangers movie surely because of the character of Trini and how she was uh, portrayed in that film, which mm -hmm. is from the original Trini, from the original um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers days. Oh, yes. <laughs> Well, actually, that just that reminds me in a tragic sense that um, Huey Trang, who played uh, Trini, actually tragically died in a car crash in 2003. So it's a shame yeah. that she... I forgot about that. Yeah. That's but, sad. but I'm more so, uh, upbeat note. So, um, yeah, you the Power Billy from Power Rangers and just the uh, Power Rangers film in general mm -hmm. and they, uh, uh, Steven Universe. Yeah. Those are actually some pretty solid choices. Oh, um, hi, um, Katie, uh, R Ruby, Rose. I think that's, I think that's the full name. So, um, thank you for joining us in the chat. Um, so just um, for any new people, um, my is here, um, what is it, filmmaker, into sound, animation, write, writing. We've been talking about, you know, the, uh, the like you know, misrepresentations of autism, stereotypes, how it can go from one direction the other two extremes essentially and some of his uh michael woods's recommendations but if you guys have any questions uh down in the comments section for him in any regard like that that like um please please do hi says thanks for joining us as well mm -hmm. uh, but um yeah i'm um, just in just in general while i just waiting but in just in case i'm um, like i'm just like in, apart from just autism related shows like what are some of your favorite um shows and films Ooh. I mean, there's, that's a whole bag of worms right there, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, so uh, ooh, I guess I could go with, I mean, obviously, I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, I love my, I love Studio Ghibli, I love Miyazaki. Uh, my favourite film of all time is Spirit of the Way, bar none. I don't think there's a film that can compete with that. But I think for shows, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an Avatar fan, I love me some Avatar. I, I, I actually uh, binge watched it during down and Cora and, uh, and Cora, not bad. Yeah, I, I honestly do think they're two of the greatest animated shows ever made. Definitely got like I wouldn't put Cora in my top five, but it would definitely be in the top ten. But Avatar is like right in three for sure. Oh, three. definitely, yeah. Mm. I mean, just in general, my favorite animated series of all time is Gravity Falls. I but, mean, I don't, I can't blame you for that. Gravity Falls is also great. So, but but I feel like that apparently like Gravity Falls. Um, Adventure Time and Steven Universe are like some of the big three uh, children's animations with adult layers that people should just check out. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely recommend, yeah, definitely Gravity Falls. I think out of those three, I think Gravity Falls is probably the easiest to watch because of its length. Uh, Adventure Time, obviously, it's like 10 seasons. Bloody hell. Yeah, it's long. I mean, it ended like, I think it ended when we started uni, so back in like 2018. Well, that's come to an end sometime. 2018, 2019? Yeah, so it was, yeah, long time. Well, um, since um, um, it's getting uh, quite quite late, uh, before, shall we start wrapping this up? And I think a good way to wrap it up, if you, um, if, um, if you wanted to give any advice to any autistic filmmakers who want to start in the industry, what would be the best advice that you can give them? Uh, I think, well, I guess this is kind of like advice to myself as well, eh? Uh, I guess. Yeah, I mean... Uh, my advice, I mean, I know, I think like, this is like for anyone as well. You're going to have those moments where you're going to be down with yourself and you think you can't do it. But my advice is persevere. Like, it may get tough and it may be difficult, but keep trying, keep at it. And, you know, if you if you find those bumps, just keep going over them. Right out of charge from over there. But eventually, you know, you'll see brighter passages and uh, wish you for the best. Because it's a journey, let me tell you. And mine's only just getting started, and we'll see where the hell I go. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice um, sentiment to end it on. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to talk, Michael. It's really no. a great a pleasure to talking to you.